Today on the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries. This week we're down here going after Texas Whitetail. You know, you always hear about Texas deer, uh, the size, everything about them, and so I was really excited to, to get the invite down here and to try out the new Zero. Last year, Garmin debuted the groundbreaking Zero Bow Sight and rapidly revolutionized the world of bow hunting. Garmin's very own Rehan Nana is joining us with his Zero Bow Sight in hand to bring home his very first Texas whitetail deer. So we're down here in South Texas. I think it's about two hours away from San Antonio. You know, I'm coming from Kansas City, hunting kind of that Midwest area. So coming down to Texas with this type of stuff, it's big country, it's beautiful, it's really interesting. You know, pulling up here, I didn't know what to expect, but there's a lot of ground to hunt here. You know, you see a lot of deer already. I mean, I think I saw a couple driving in. So I was just really excited to get down here, check the place out. You know, food was already ready down here, but I was kind of champing at the bit to get out hunting. This week we're down here going after Texas whitetail. You know, you always hear about Texas deer, uh, the size, everything about them. And so I was really excited to, to get the invite down here and to try out the new Zero. So Garmin Zero is Garmin's new bow sight, and it's this incredible piece of technology that incorporates both range finding technology and bow sight into one. So. Really in short, uh, instead of having to pick up and, and you know, use a range finder and then you know, figure out distance on your bow sight, it's all in one. It's a compact little unit that goes right on your bow like a typical bow sight. And when you're on draw, there's a button that you press and it actually gives you the range and then drops the pin on a, on, you know, a reticle dot right there to the exact yardage, which is just fantastic in my mind. And what's so nice about it is you're not you know, splitting pins or anything like that. You get the exact yardage, it compensates for angles, and you know, it gives you that precise shooting when you really need it. I actually started shooting recurve when I was younger, and so coming into the compound with a zero, it was a big change, but it's the, kind of the change that I was looking for. I mean, it was one of those things that I've been shooting it kind of just day in and day out, you know. The thing is, with that zero, it's a fantastic piece of technology, but you still need to practice. You know, it gives you that precision in aiming when you need it, but you got to do everything up to that point. So I've been ducking out from work, you know, over lunch and getting shots in, knowing we were coming down here and hunting back uh, on my farm and whatnot. And this entire season, every time I use it, it just kind of blows my hair back. You know, it's, it's everything you kind of want in a bow sight. And one of the fun things that I do is just picking random spots and random angles that you'd be shooting from and it's just dead on every time you know what I mean starting that you know going 20 23 27 30 33 you know 35 it gives you that exact pin every single time you know the one of the things that the zero won't do is you know you still have to know deer you still have to practice you still have to be comfortable and most importantly know your limitations you know for me uh, you know, I, I really felt comfortable into that 30 yard mark, uh, especially from the sitting position. And, you know, you just kind of have to draw that line saying, while this site can go out to 100 yards for target, you know, this is where I feel comfortable as a hunter. And that's the limitations that you have to follow. As hunters, we're always trying to make, you know, the most ethical shot. And one of the things you never want to do is lose an animal. You know, if it's deer, if it's birds, if it's anything. And so, one of the things that I, I really love about this is that site helps you in those situations because instead of, you know, having splitting pins and guessing yardage, when you're putting that pin on that animal, it's exactly where it should be. Down here in Texas, uh, there's, there's a lot of deer and uh, there's a lot of eyeballs on you when you're in the stand. And so having that ability not to be, you know, moving with a range finder and then, you know, with your bow is really, really helpful down here. You know, it's just one fluid motion up, range it, let it fly. 
Visit Garmin.com to learn more about this incredible technology and add it to your collection of hunting gear. Well, coming up, Ray Han makes his way out into the field with the hopes of tracking down a mature Texas whitetail. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Garmin Zero, leave the guesswork behind. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors, we love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus free two day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. The all new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. An ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine. And next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side-by-side -side delivers this level of proven off-road performance. The all-new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. It's the morning of day one out here in Deer Camp and a strong cold front has blown through along with some pretty gusty winds. Let's see how it affects today's game plan. Coming down to Texas, I thought it was going to be 65 and sunny. Uh, the weather changed pretty quick down here, and I felt like I was back home in Tornado Alley. I mean, we just had north winds going 20, 25 miles an hour. So talking with Wade, we kind of made the decision in the morning just with the wind to really set up in a ground blind that put up. It was on some oats, uh, so a food plot there. and. Great setup, you know, back brushed in a bit there and immediately deer started coming through and, you know, as much as we say it as, as hunters, I mean, it never gets old seeing those animals, you know, in their element, doing their thing. down here what's really nice is they follow a management program for those bucks and so really one of the things that we were looking for is that four plus year old eight point you know five plus year old ten point and so that first day while we saw some deer coming through that were nice they were young and um, it, it's just a uh, following that plan gives an opportunity to really have a, a constructive management program out here really healthy deer and uh, get the opportunity for the deer that you're looking for. You know, the wind uh, is both, I guess, kind of your best friend and worst enemy sometimes. One of the things that's really nice is that it covers sound a lot better. And so, you know, speaking with Rusty, our cameraman, still in that low, hushed voice, but being able to just kind of communicate back and forth, you know, admiring those deer that were coming through, talking about the different ones. And so that was nice. It's, it's sometimes it, it, it helps you out so you're not just sitting there in dead silence and uh, dead still, you know, so a little bit more sociable aspect of it at sometimes. So we're out here on day one and uh, we snuck in here an hour before, just in time. So so nice axis come through, it was still young. Uh, and then deer started flooding in, it was great. You know, there was a couple possible shooters there, but it's day one, so we just kind of decided to pass on it. Um, but a lot of opportunity here and it's just great to see this many deer this on day one, you know. Right now, as you may be able to tell, we got quite a bit of wind going on, and uh, so we'll set up in a ground blind. 
I'm not as familiar with the ground blind as I am stands, but I was out getting shot in and everything like that yesterday. It's about uh, 8.45 right now, and uh, deer have kind of stopped moving through, so we're gonna turn in, get some breakfast, and then hopefully uh, get back out here this afternoon. When we return, we celebrate the one-year anniversary of the Garmin Zero and join Ray Han on his second hunt. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Conquest Sense, Hunt Sense, and Dog Training Sense. Ten-point crossbows. Perfection lives here. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. High vis Shooting Systems. See what you've been missing. How do you aim a 36-yard shot? with a 30-yard fixed pin at a 15-degree angle with a 7-inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy. You get one of these. Zero. The auto-ranging digital bow sight from Garmin. The thing about public land is that most people hunt the same old beaten path. The thing about you is, you're not most folks. Introducing the new TC Compass, only by Thompson Center. Follow your own compass with America's master gun maker. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Before we join Rayhan and his Garmin Zero back in the field, we're gonna sit down with Wade, Clark, and Michael as they discuss their first impressions of the Garmin Zero as we celebrate its one year anniversary. You know, when I look back about, I don't know, it's been almost four years ago, I was at SHOT Show, a guy from Garmin came by with some ideas and some concepts, and then another guy started mentioning, and then the engineers, and the next thing you know, we had the Zero in our hands out here for the first time. I mean, I was kind of blown away looking at it, but it was a little intimidating. Yeah, you know, the cool thing about it is, is that it, when you get it dialed in, now it takes some dialing in, you gotta get it right. It, it forces you to shoot a lot because you wanna get that reticle. The reticle is what looks out there and actually puts the pin where you want it to be. So it's actually your range finder. And actually, Michael is, is the one that's taught me the most about it. He, he figured that whole deal out really fast. And it's not that difficult, but you gotta understand it. You got the first one and you made it work with that first hunt. Killed a, it was a 12 point, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it was a beautiful deer. Um, you know, what I remember about that whole thing is, is that the, the thing about it is, is that that was a prototype. We, they, it wasn't like they were coming out and fine tuned yet. So we were getting the first ones yep. and you two figured it out and got that thing dialed in and then killed a great deer. So that was pretty cool. I think we shot like 80 times that night. Yeah, I mean, we shot a bunch and then, you know, I think we had to do an update or something from the engineer. It was on and we were good to go. Well, the coolest thing about the update, I, I, you know, the guy's like, hey, I just sent you an email to update your site, and I'm thinking, huh? <laughs> you know, and so all of these changes they've done to the site, they literally can put it on the Garmin website, and you plug your site in, so if there's any bugs, any changes, any cool additions, it, it just, it's, it's like updating your phone. Yeah, it's, it's like your phone, or, you know, like for me and you, when we're doing it on our boat, on our boats with our... Yeah electronics we we you know they change pan optics or they change some kind of feature in there we change them all the time so you got to get used to that part of it but it does give you those little added extra hey thanks guys now let's join Rayhan on his next hunt This morning we saw a lot of deer. Wind was picking up. We actually moved to a different ranch called the Eveline down here. And uh, we got a nice creek bottom draw. And uh, apparently pretty much everything moves through here. So we're just gonna kinda wait and see what comes through. But hopefully we can get our buck tonight. We already got movement down there. Luckily that weather kinda moved through a little bit, but we still had some wind. So 
in that tripod with the wind. Wasn't able to communicate with Rusty on that one as much, and so it was pretty critical that we weren't moving as much. You know, you gotta be careful. And when we set in, it was kind of crazy. Almost immediately, we had deer coming in. I didn't even have time to put on my coat, and uh, I think I counted about 12 deer just sitting, you know, within 30 yards of us. We had an axis come through. Then we also had, you know, just does moving through. A few small bucks, um, wasn't what we were looking for, but that's patience, I guess it's a virtue. The way that that tripod's set up, there's a couple different shooting lanes, but it's pretty, you know, there's timber and it's pretty brushy. And, uh, you know, out of the corner of my eye, you know, I see this really, really nice buck coming through and I just caught a glimpse of him. And so immediately just kind of stopped moving. He was staying in a thicker drawl area. So just kind of slowly got back, settled in and uh, got a really good look at him. And, you know, immediately knew that was kind of the deer I was looking for. I mean, just immediately knew that that was in that age class that we were looking for. That was a fantastic buck. And you wish you could just draw up immediately right then you wish he had that shot, but he, he didn't want he didn't want to give us an opportunity, and so he stayed pretty thick. I was thinking, you know, where he was at, he was going to kind of cruise left a little bit and give me a nice shot at about 25. So I was kind of positioning for myself for that, but it was it was just a waiting game there. When he gave me a little bit more of a chance to look at him, you could tell he was an old deer. You could tell that this was kind of his turf and he'd been here for a while. He had that sagging belly. He looked like he was just a little bit older, maybe maybe smaller than he should have been. Just a really, really nice, mature deer. And when I got that, you know, first saw his, his rack there, you know, that's the deer I thought we were looking for. But when we got to see a really good look at him, it was solidified, that was the deer. There was no questions and all we needed to do was have him give us a shot. Seeing that deer, I had a little bit of buck fever and it, it's kind of this weird half crouching, half standing position as you're getting up. So you may see me shaking just a little bit on that one and that's all right, you know, good deer deserves that. Well, this buck is approaching the position for a great shot. However, like Ray Han mentioned earlier, sometimes the wind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Smith & Wesson Performance Center, performance when it matters most. Bradley Smoker, food smoking made easy. Feed your need for speed. The Nitro XRT unleashes speeds up to 470 feet per second, producing 25% flatter aero trajectory, resulting in knock breaking accuracy and unprecedented knockdown power. The world has never seen a crossbow this fast, accurate, and compact. The Nitro XRT from 10 Point. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. You know, communicating with Rusty, our cameraman, he's awesome, does a great job. One of the things in that tripod is tough is that one, I was on the swivel seat, so he was behind me. He was yelling at me, hold on, hold on, hold on. But with the wind and me focused on that buck, I could not hear him for the life of me. As soon as that arrow's gone, you know, we, the work's not done. You still got a lot more to, to do, but you know, I feel like I was shaking like a leaf. I was so happy. And one of the first things we did was we, we got out that inReach and we sent Wade a message saying, hey, 
buck down, you know, we got it. After the shot, you know, you always want to see a deer go down as quickly as it can. And when it ducks into that brush, it starts kind of creeping in your mind, the what ifs. Can you see your arrow? Yeah. Can you see the fletching? Yeah. Is it a different color at all? The arrow? Yeah. No, there's, I think there's blood on the fletching. Yeah. OK. Hey, let's give it 30 minutes. When it comes to bow hunting, it's important to give the deer an ample amount of time to let nature take its course, even if you're confident you took a perfect shot. Once you're positive enough time has passed, it's time to start tracking. In the stand, we could see there's blood right by the arrow. There's a little bit on the tree, so you know we knew that we had made a good shot on it, but sometimes it doesn't, you know, immediately bleed as much as you want for a track. And so for that first little bit, we were seeing spots here, spots there. That's when your gut kind of starts flipping and you start running through everything again. And, you know, did I do this right? Did I do that right? Was it a, the shot that I thought it was? And, you know, at that point, all you can do is really start tracking it and start looking. And luckily we have, you know, some great people here and almost immediately we came on just nice, nice blood for it. Two spots of it, so it looked like it was from both sides. I think probably within another 10, 15 yards, somebody hollered out. And when they hollered out, I knew, I knew we had it. I was uh, pretty worried there right after we got down out of the tree. There wasn't as much blood as I had hoped and uh, kind of died off there a little bit, but we caught on to a nice, nice patch. And here he is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What an awesome deer. My goodness. You know, he uh, spent a lot of time in the season, or a lot of time in the stand this season, and just really wasn't able to connect. But then this thing came in, and I just couldn't believe it. It was finally all coming together. And, uh, you know, I had that zero on there, and it was right at 12 yards, and I was like, that's, couldn't believe that that's where I thought it was going to be a further shot than that. And it's right on it, and here he is. Unbelievable. You made a perfect shot right there because he didn't go where, I mean, that's your tree right there. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he just, he was, he was running dead the whole time. When we talked about your hunt, the biggest thing, you didn't care how big he was as long as you made a good shot. Yeah. Your boss told me that you had shot the string <laughs> off of this bow, that you had shot every day for lunch. And that's, man, that's phenomenal. That means you care yeah. about the animal. You know, that's why this thing's so great. I mean, in my mind, it's that, you know, you know exactly where you're shooting, you know, the exact yardage, you know, with wind, everything going on, you know, around here and, and kind of going through the trees, that just really helped. That's just too cool. I, yeah. I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. Well, <laughs> Wade, I'll tell you what, I couldn't be happy either. So yeah. let me shake your hand again on That's that one. Awesome. Thank you. Hunt's wrapping up and I was, I was kind of just been looking back on it and it's kind of all that, you know, all the practice, all the areas you're playing. First season with that zero, you know, I couldn't have thought of a better way to end it, you know. This entire season, I was, I was thinking about that zero and, and that buck I was hoping to take with it. And at the end of the day, everything came together. We got a really nice, mature buck that had been on this property for at least seven years. And using that zero, we were able to get that exact shot that we needed. It went 35 yards and dropped. I don't know what more you could ask for, you know. This, this is one of those hunts that everything comes together. You know, I, I'm sure my next hunt's gonna be pretty bad, but for the time being, I'm gonna enjoy the moment. Congratulations, Ray Hun, on your first entry into the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries. Protect it or lose it. Protect it or lose it. Protect it or lose it. Protect it 
or lose it. Protect it. Or lose it. Protect it or lose it. For precise prescription eyewear, Wiley X knows there's no room for error. We meticulously craft our own prescription lenses to fit our high wrap frames. And our ANSI safety rated lenses are tested to uncompromising standards. Nothing but precise. Because precision is everything. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started. That there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. We plan all year for this. We hone our skills. We have confidence in the gear we choose. We pour over thousands of images and videos. When the time comes, will you be ready? Introducing the all new 4K camera by Stealth Cam. Proven. What does it take to make Evercom deer scent? It takes a deer farmer who raises whitetails. It takes mixing the special blend of Evercom, testing each batch. It smells like deer. And then pouring each container. Each container is cleaned, examined, and packaged for shipping. It takes the finest deer herd and a great team of people to make the best hunting scent available. Evercom, from Conquest Scents. Want to know why the top shooting pros choose HiViz? HiViz has an enormous lineup of sights for every shooting platform possible that are clean looking and easy to mount. Improve your shooting with faster target acquisition and eliminate cross-eyed dominance. HiViz sights are the brightest out there, helping you find your target with ease no matter the shooting conditions. Choose the best, choose HiViz, and see what you've been missing. Nobody likes crawling, creepy, or flying bugs. So ward them off with Sawyer Permethrin. It's more than a repellent. This odorless spray repels and kills mosquitoes, ticks, and more than 55 other kinds of insects. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler.